that are very helpful uh, for today in the academic world because it's basically going back to things that we already knew and looking at them in a fresh a fresh way. So for example, um, going back to Irenaeus and, and various ancient texts like that and, and reinterpreting them. So anyway, let's get to Tischendorf and his book uses the classical arguments in the defense of the origin of the Gospels, which I think need to be heard today. He says on page 23, the life of Jesus has become center of religious controversies which agitate our age. The importance of this fact is great. At its foundation lies the confession that Christianity is not grounded so much on the doctrine of him from whom it received its name as upon his person. Every Accepitation of the word Christianity, which is antagonistic to this confession, disowns the real character of the term and rests on misconception. The person of Jesus is the cornerstone of which the church bases its foundation. To it, the doctrine of Jesus and, um, and of his disciples always and with the utmost distinct, distinctness points with the person of Jesus. Christianity stands or falls. To rob this person of his greatness, of that greatness which the entire church ascribed to him under the name Son of God, and yet to think to retain the Christian faith and the Christian church is a futile attempt, vain mockery. Even the morality which some might hope to rescue from the general shipwreck of faith is weakened by the unavoidable and remorseless contradictions which arise. For if the morality is sound, it must be a good tree growing from a diseased root. The life of Jesus is the most momentous of all questions which the church has to encounter, the one which is decisive whether it shall or shall not live. Whence do we derive our knowledge of the life of Jesus almost exclusively from our four Gospels, in which the divine person of Jesus, the center of Christian belief, and the main object of all attacks upon it is presented in essentially the same light as in the Epistle of Paul. Unquestionably, the oldest of all the apostolic documents, all else, that we know of him is confirmed to a few expressions and acts and the unimportant exceptions is in the direct connection with and dependent on the Gospels. By far the most of these sources are to be found in the apocryphal, i.e. not genuine, untrustworthy fragments, not bearing the true names of their authors and aiming the more or less skill to supplement and complement the Gospel narratives. Others, partly of Jewish and partly of heathen origin, avow that very outset the intention of Hussein and the Gospels. Finally, we possess the two classical writers of the first and the two following centuries, Tacitus and Pliny. A few incidental expressions which have a lasting interest, the first testifying that Christ, the founder of the religion, which again so strong a hold even in Nero's time, had been punished with death by the pure creator Pontius Pilate, and during the reign of Tiberius, while Pliny asserts in a communication to Trajan that the Christians already, a numerous body in Bithynia, were in the habit of singing songs of praise to Christ as to a God. Our Gospels, therefore, if not the only authorities relative to the life of Jesus, are by all, by all odds the most important ones, and the only direct sources that are in existence. If then the life life of Jesus is only made to us by the Gospels. If we are directed to these books for the solution of all our questions about the birth, the activities, the conversation, character and fortunes of Jesus, we have, of course, no less weighty an inquiry before us than this, when spring our Gospels. For upon the origin of these books hinge their trustworthiness and all their value. So much depending on this first step, very many are the investigations which have been made in these modern times into the origin of the Gospels. It has been a question with what justice the names of the prominent members of the Twelve, Matthew and John, and the names of the helpers and followers Mark and Luke have been assigned to the four Gospels. Just so far as the authorships of these documents has been admitted, as due to those revered, revered men, the Gospels have been accepted as authentic and trustworthy record of the life of the Lord. Their names have been regarded as satisfactory guarantee guarantee that in the writing in which they were coupled truth could only be sought, that in them truth only was wished, and that in them truth uh, was authentically recorded. There is indeed another way of testing the reliability of the Gospels. After the rise of rationalizing a rationalistic spirit, and then when the attempt was made to set the reason of man above everything which had 
previously borne the name of divine revelation, hands were laid at once on the biblical miracles and it was claimed that they must be explained by the light of the imperfect culture of that time and the incorrect appreciation of the Old Testament. Out of this grew the theory of accommodation, as it was called, which asserted that Jesus made his words chime in with the expectation of his age, and that he gave himself out to be a more important personage than he really was. This theory of the rise of the Gospels has culminated in the piece of botch work which issued from the Paris Press in 1863. The author of that book, not troubling with any speculation with respect to the share with which the apostles may have had in delineated the gospel portraits but following his own self-imposed theories about miracles and revelations has displayed violent recklessness and given way to the most unbridled fantasies respect to the gospel history catering both the uh, caricaturing both it and its hero he has written a book which has much more the character of a shameless colony of jesus than of an honest investigation into his career can we apply the terms historical inquiry to an attempt to show that John wrote the fourth gospel out of a spirit of self-love, not without jealousy of Peter and full of hatred to Judas Iscariot? Can we dignify by so high a term as scientific investigation such a theory as this respect to the cause of sympathy felt for Jesus by the wife of Pilate that she saw the Gentile Galilean, the fine-looking young man from a window of the palace that looted out in the temple court at the that in consequence the thought that the blood was to be spilled rested like a mountain lord upon her soul. To cite one or two more examples of this mode of dealing with the Gospels, what shall we say of his manner of treating raising of Lazarus, where he endeavours uh, to show that Jesus, whose role was becoming more